First of all, hello. My name is Pastor Brian, and welcome to New Hope Community Church. If you call New Hope your home, then you know that something is just not the same. <laughs> if you're visiting, I want to tell you a little bit, uh, tell you a few things, because um, we have a little different service going on today. This isn't a, a normal service for us. Today, by design, we have no volunteers, and we have very uh, we have a few less luxuries that uh, that we're used to. First of all, we don't have uh, any greeters. If this is your first time in, normally we have people standing at the door with a nice smile on their face and a handshake or a hug that like to welcome you into New Hope Community Church. Today, we didn't have that. And usually when our greeters meet people, they hand them a bulletin. We like to have a bulletin. We like to pass it out to people so they know what's going on here at New Hope. They know the, the activities that are going on. It'll tell you a little bit about who we are, what we believe, where you can find out some more information about us, and uh, give you a spot where you can take some notes on the sermon. And today, we don't have that. We uh, normally have uh, electricity and lights. And uh, so the only electricity we're using today is for my mic, so that uh, that's just for make sure that the message gets out. But uh, and, and we usually have age-appropriate classes for all of our children. And so that if you come in with your children, you can take your children back to an, an age-appropriate class going all the way from infant through high school. Normally we have a, a nice spread of, of coffee and pastries and fruit. So when you come in in the morning, you can uh, grab yourself some uh, uh, coffee or a juice and, uh, and maybe a donut or a banana and enjoy that while you uh, enjoy some, some uh, conversation with some people. But not today. On a, on a typical Sunday, you can come into the sanctuary and sit down, and, and we have a screen that comes down, and, and we have our announcements on the screen before service starts, and so you can see what's going on as well. You could see a few things, and then we have somebody who takes uh, some kind of a video, it's usually different every week, and, and they combine it with a countdown, very interesting video to watch, and then it also lets you know what time our services are going to start. Again, today, we don't have that. And one of the things that I'm sure most people are going to miss uh, uh, quite a bit is that uh, we start off with a fantastic uh, praise band, a worship band. And we've got a band that, that begins us and leads us in worship to God. And uh, they, they come up here and, and do such a wonderful job. And today we don't have that. And uh, finally, I say finally, and it's not really finally, but one of the things that you would notice is that during a message, uh, in, a, in addition to lights, we would have PowerPoint in order to make sure that the, the main points of the message are, are evident and clear. And, uh, and we're not using that today either. Today we have none of those things, and today we, we've stripped it all away. And again, we've done all of that by design. We've asked all of our volunteers for today to, to have a seat and, and take a seat and, and, and not uh, do their normal volunteer duties today. We, we've stripped it away. Because we're going to take a few hours, uh, look at a few hours in the life of Jesus where it was all stripped away from Him. We're going to look at what uh, our book, the story, calls uh, the hour of darkness. So if you'll begin with me in prayer. Our dear Father in heaven, Lord, we give you thanks. Lord, maybe we take a, a moment to, uh, to understand that as we sit in this dark sanctuary, the blessings that you shower upon us. And uh, Lord, may the, the focus of this message be this cross that is in the center of the stage here. And not even so much the cross, but, but the Messiah that hung on the cross. Lord, I ask that you would touch our hearts and let, Lord, where my words are not clear, may the Holy Spirit bring clarity. Uh, the, the space between the, the, the pulpit and the pew is holy ground, and it's yours. And Lord, we ask that it is there that you reside, and, and uh, we ask for your power. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I do want to let you know um, 
If you are visiting, we are in a series. This is going through a book called The Story. The Story is a chronological walk through Scripture. It's 31 weeks, and we've managed to take it to 33 because we've added in a few extra things. But 31 weeks where we are walking through uh, Scripture, and it's kind of an abridged version of Scripture, and it's, it's, a, it's an attempt to become more biblically literate so we understand the Bible better. So when we pick up the Bible, we don't think this is a big scary book and, and it's too difficult to understand. And uh, we've gone through the Old Testament, we're into the New Testament, and we've now reached a point where we are, are looking at the last few hours of the life of Jesus. Now, one of the things that we've done and noticed is, is this walk through Scripture as a walk towards this moment. And again, I want to point out that when we do have our classes in this series, that, that all of our children are learning the same thing. And so, so if you have your children in here today... Um, uh, well, just a couple of things. We do have a cry room. If you need to take them out there, they're not going to bother me, but they might bother somebody else. And, 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 and you've, we have a mics on in the, in, the, in the lobby if that makes you more comfortable. But I want you to know that your, your children have been learning the same things and their classrooms back there that we've been learning in here. And so when you leave here, uh, you have an opportunity to sit down over pancakes and discuss it with your children because that is certainly uh, one of the things that God has called us to do. Each one of us is to teach our own children. This isn't a burden that you should place solely upon the church. And it falls upon our shoulders as parents. But uh, we uh, have walked through Scripture now. We've seen that God has orchestrated all of history to point towards this time in Jesus' life. To point towards the person of Jesus Christ. We've seen that he has orchestrated the lives of the Old Testament uh, saints and prophets to point towards Jesus. And when we look at the life of Abraham and Isaac and certain encounters in their life, like when Abraham was going to uh, sacrifice Isaac, that is a picture of what Jesus did for us. We look at the life of Joseph and, and all that he led with his, his brothers and how in Egypt, and we see that there's a picture of Jesus in that. And we see that, that God has had his hand in this whole thing, in this walk towards this life of Jesus, and specifically towards these few hours of Jesus that lead up to this cross. Now, Jesus was always very, very clear in His ministry. He always told His disciples very clearly, listen, I, I have to go to the cross. He didn't tell uh, anything confusing about that. He didn't mix words. He wasn't uh, secretive about that. He told them very clearly, I have to go to the cross. Mark uh, chapter 8, he said, He began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the others, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed. He spoke plainly about this. He says he spoke plainly about this. He, he wasn't confusing about it. He, he told them exactly what was going to happen. There was no mystery involved. He says, I have to die alone. And still Scripture says that they did not understand what he meant. It was a difficult thing for them to grasp. Now when we look at this chapter in our storybook, which is uh, uh, chapter 26, and we are talking about the hour of darkness, we look in this chapter, we see that Jesus had to make that walk alone. John chapter 13, Jesus made the comment, Where I go, you cannot follow me now. Where I go, you cannot follow me now. When we look at the last few hours of Jesus' life, we see things that made people fall away. We see that all the people that had gathered around Jesus and all the people that had were His disciples and His friends and His family, in those last few hours, they all fell away. And for different reasons. And I'm going to take a look at some of those reasons because some of those reasons might strike us today square between the eyes and we might understand and realize that, wow, that's what's caused me to fall away from Jesus. That's one of the things that has, has come into my life that has caused me to turn my back. So I want to briefly take a look at a few of these, these people in these last few hours. We look at the, the, the Last Supper that Jesus had. We look at His uh, 12 disciples that He gathered around Him, His 12 apostles, to celebrate this, this Last Supper. And we see that in the midst of it, that Judas got up from the table. 
Now, Judas had already made plans with the, uh, the leaders of the Jewish community that he was going to turn Jesus over. And Scripture tells us Judas got up to betray Jesus. And sadly, some people, that's, that's what they do. That's what we do. Sometimes, whether you make a life out of it or you make a, an instant out of it, we just flat out betray Jesus. You know who He is? We know what He's come to do. We know what He's done for us. And yet, we choose to turn our back. It's not so much a falling away as an intentional, I'm going to turn and walk away from you. And some of us find ourselves in times like that. There are a lot of people who, who say this when they say, listen, I know what Jesus did. I'm not ready to live my life like that. I'm going to wait until my deathbed and confess my faith in Jesus. He will then forgive me and then I will go to heaven. That is a life of betraying Jesus. If you know who He is and you know what He's done and you know what He came for and you say, I will not do that. I will not follow Him. That's a betrayal. Judas walked away. Thomas had a conversation with Jesus. Jesus made a comment. He said, listen, where I'm going, you can't go. And Thomas says, well, we don't know where you're going. We don't know. So Thomas had a problem. He, had this, this, he was just ignorant. Not, not in a negative way. He just didn't know. And we assume today... And I'll talk about our Western culture. We assume that everybody knows the name of Jesus, which is true for the most part. People know the name of Jesus, but because you know the name of Jesus doesn't mean you know the purpose of Jesus. And I'm going to tell you, I grew up, most of you know, I grew up going to, uh, uh, I went to a Catholic school. I grew up Catholic. Okay, I'm not bashing Catholics. I'm saying uh, in the experience that I had, if the explanation of Jesus was ever given to me, I never heard it. And that may have been more my fault than anybody else's. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. But not until I was 30 years old did someone explain to me who Jesus was and what Jesus did for me that I then, even after growing up and having a Bible in front of me in school for 12 years, then did I understand who Jesus was. I was ignorant about it. Despite the fact I knew the name of Jesus, I didn't know what He had done for me. We've got a lot of people like that. A whole lot of people. Your neighbors might know the name, but it doesn't mean they know the person or what He did. Don't assume that people around you know because they have heard of the name that they know what He did. We need to make sure that those people who are falling away from Jesus out of, out of ignorance, and maybe to no fault of their own, that we can shine that light for them. And, and, and if you don't know, and if you're here, and if you've heard the name of Jesus all your life, and you're saying, well, I know the name of Jesus, let me, let me take just a second and tell you that Jesus... And this cross is why we believe what we believe. Because we all deserved to die and be separated from God. Okay? We deserve to die and be separated from God. And what Jesus did is He said, you know, even though you deserve it, I'm going to take that punishment for you so you don't have to take it. That's why Jesus died on a cross for us. That's why Jesus hung on a cross. He was taking a punishment that we deserved and so we didn't have to face it and so we can spend eternity with God. So don't let ignorance be something that causes you to fall away or someone that you love to fall away. Thomas, that was Thomas. Thomas fell away because he didn't know. Philip made a comment. He's talking with Jesus and Philip made a comment. He said, Jesus, if you will just show us the Father, that will be enough. Just show us a little bit more and that will be enough. Just give us a little bit more and that will be enough. There was an issue of greed with, with Philip and Philip was saying, you know, I, 
I know that we've been with you for three years, and I know we've seen all these miracles out of you, and I know we've seen you walk on water. I know we've seen you raise the dead, heal the, the lepers. I, I, we've seen all that, but you know what? A little bit more. Give me a little bit more. And it becomes an issue of greed. We want, we want one more miracle. We want one more dollar. We want one more friend. We want one more day. And because... Jesus doesn't become that vending machine God that sometimes that we call Him to be, then maybe we fall away. Jesus is all that you or I will ever need. And to ask more of Him is, is unnecessary and it's greedy for our own sakes because He's provided us everything. Peter, James, and John went with Jesus and Jesus asked them, come with me. This is in the Garden of Gethsemane. These, this is hours before and his, his, his betrayal when he's going to be taken and beaten and hung on a cross. And he asked uh, Peter, James, and John, just come pray with me. Sit and pray with me. And, and Peter, James, and John, they all fell asleep. They were tired. So they went to sleep. And Jesus came back and said, Hey, wake up and pray. Please, just, just pray. And they said, no, 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 okay. And then they fell asleep again. It becomes an issue, a very real issue, that sometimes we need to realize that, that fatigue is something that stands between us and a relationship with God. Okay, God gave us uh, time. He told us to rest. He said, you have to rest. Okay, We call that Sabbath and, and, and we need to take time to rest. I, I heard a sermon one time and I thought it was so interesting and it still sticks in my mind. It says one of the holiest things that you can do today is go home and take a nap. <laughs> Not all of you. But some of you. Sometimes we work and work and work and work and work so much and we keep ourselves so busy and we do so many things and have so many things on our plate that we just don't have the time or the energy for God. And we fall away from God. Fatigue is a very real barrier that can come between us and God. And we need to recognize that and be aware of that. And here's an interesting one, and I didn't know exactly how to, to talk about this one because, you know, Jesus, the Scripture gives us a little insight into what Jesus says when He's praying to God in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus' prayer said this, Lord, if there is another way, if, if you can take this cup from me, and we look and we see that Jesus hung on the cross after that. Jesus said, if you can take this cup from me, but not my will, your will. And, and Jesus hung on the cross after that. It was God's will that Jesus hung on the cross. God was stating, there's no other way. There's no other alternative. When Jesus, God Himself, was talking to the Father, God the Son was talking to God the Father, He said, hey, listen, if there's an alternative, let's let them know about it. And God said, there is no alternative. There's no other way. And we live in a world today that says, listen, all the roads lead to God. All the roads will take us to God. And Jesus very emphatically said, they don't. There is no other way. I cannot take this cup from the Son because if I do, then, then you people, then humanity has lost our road to God. And He was not going to give that up. Jesus was going to pay whatever price it took in order for us to have an eternity with Him. You see then, when they come and they take Jesus in the garden, Matthew 26 tells us, Then all the disciples, all the disciples left Him and fled. And this becomes an issue of, of fear. We, we get worried, what does that mean if we're going to accept Jesus? What kind of persecution am I going to come under? What kind of life changes am I going to have to make if I follow Jesus? What is it in my life that is going to be uh, shown to me by the Holy Spirit that I have to take this out of my life? Or I need to add this in my life. What, what is going to be different? 
How are people going to look at me when I stand by the side of Jesus? How unpopular am I going to be? And we allow that fear to dictate whether or not we stand by the side of Jesus. And some of us fall away. And, and listen, if this isn't the lifestyle that you have, if you don't have a lifestyle that's fallen away with God, or fallen away from God, then, then we, each of us are guilty of moments. So think about those moments. And what is it that causes you? And what is, what is your weak spot that causes you to fall away? Just before the service, somebody handed me an interesting article. Because when it says all the disciples fell away, it was probably out of fear. I mean, they were taking him to a torture device. They didn't want any part of that. But I wonder, as all of them ran away, this article talks about a woman in 1964 in New York City who was stabbed. 38 people witnessed the attack, but no one called for help. 38 people watched this woman die and no one called for help because 38 people thought that somebody else was going to do it. 38 people thought, well, somebody else will pick up a phone. Somebody else will step in. And maybe that's what the disciples were thinking when they were running away. Well, somebody else will stay by his side. Well, I heard Peter say he'll never leave him. Well, I heard uh, uh, Thomas say he won't go. So they're probably staying with him as they run away. can't rely upon someone else. We need to stand by Jesus of ourselves our, uh, make that our, our own decision. So Jesus comes to that hour, that time, that's this hour of darkness and they were all gone. He was all alone. And He was enough. On that cross, He had no friends he had no disciples. He had no teachers of the law, no Pharisees, no scribes. There was no music. There was no donuts. There were no greeters. There was no Sunday school. There was no babysitters. Jesus was enough. At the Last Supper, the Last Supper is a, 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 a Passover meal called a Seder meal and, and there was a, a way they did that and we've celebrated the, that here in, in the past but there's a point where they go through the history of, of what God's people have been through and after each step of what they've been through there's a term called Dayenu and Dayenu means it would have been enough Jesus is enough we say that Dayenu is enough God's grace through Jesus is enough. There's a, a theological term called Christus. Solus Christus. It means Christ alone. Christ alone. Christ plus nothing. Christ alone is enough. Alone on a cross. There's no one else to share the pain. No one else to share the loneliness. No one else to share the burden of the world. So there's no mistake. There's no one else to thank for that payment. Christ alone. So I'm going to go back to what Jesus said because He said, Where I go, you cannot follow Me now. Well, the rest of that sentence says, But you will follow later. Jesus said you would be, uh, He would be lifted up on a cross alone, but after that He would draw all men to Himself. And that's what we do here on Sunday mornings. That's what we do in our small groups. That's what we do in our, in our events and our picnics. We draw to Him. We don't come around together and gather together because there's food or there's music or there's a, a message from a preacher. We come together because uh, not even of this cross. We don't come together because of the cross. We come together because of the Messiah that hung on this cross. The Messiah that died on this cross. The Messiah that paid our penalty on that cross. While He went there alone, He then calls all of us together to gather around Him after He made that payment. You know, we add food and drink to our Sunday service not because it adds anything to Christ. 
It celebrates Christ. And it celebrates Christ not through no so much the food and the drink, but it celebrates Christ through the people who are willing to step forward and serve in order to shine their light on Christ. We add music to a service, not because it adds anything to what Christ did, but because out of the volunteer hands and the people that are using their gifts to shine their light on what He did for us, it illuminates the payment that He made. It illuminates what He did. It doesn't add to it, it illuminates it. We have a, a tape ministry where we can hand out messages and that's people who are sharing their time and, and their efforts. We have greeters who stand and, and give a smile and a handshake and a hug. We have people who, who set out the, the coffee and the donuts and the fruit each Sunday. We have, we have the band who comes up. We have so many people who glorify God through their service to Him. Not to add anything to what He has done, but to show appreciation for what He's done on the cross. came in, and I don't know if any of you had noticed or not, but on the cross there's a sign. I didn't put that there. Someone anonymously put that sign up there. It says, what is your burden? And they set a, a piece of paper and a pen at the foot of the cross. I want to support the effort of that person. Because there's a, a very real understanding that that solus Christo, only Christ, Christ alone. What burden is it that you have this morning? What is it that keeps you from Christ? What is it that causes you to follow fall away from Christ? What causes you to turn your back and run from Christ? What is it that is blocking you from a relationship with Christ? What is it that is keeping you from going deeper with Christ? What is it that you have pushed and pulled and lugged and, 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 and fought with and struggled with because you think you have to handle this? What is it that you used every possible means that you can imagine to, to remedy in your life but you just can't do it? What is it that Christ alone can carry? What is it that Christ alone paid for on that cross? What is it that Christ alone is enough to cover in your life? I'm going to invite you now at this point I'm going to take a few moments. I want you to take this opportunity to think about that. I want you to take a, this opportunity to, to come forward and, and whatever it is that you want to acknowledge and say, this is my barrier. This is the thing that has, that has kept me from growing in a relationship with Christ. This is the thing. I want you to take this opportunity to come forward and, and, and take a pencil and a piece of paper and jot it down. And there's tape up here. And tape it to the cross. What is your burden? Christ alone is enough. This, this walk of all of history has led to that moment where He made this payment. Christ alone. So oftentimes we get caught up in, in, in all the peripherals and all the other things and all the other other highlights and, and, and all the things that don't matter. And, and this is all that matters. And what Jesus did for us on the cross is all that matters. When the fact that three days later He didn't stay in the grave, but He rose from the grave and, and, and promised us an eternal life. That's all that matters. Not what kind of chairs we sit in, not what kind of lights we have, not what kind of building that we have, not what kind of food we serve. Nothing matters but that. And He calls us all together to worship that. 
He calls us all together to worship that. And people do that the world over. And they have for centuries. They have come together. And it doesn't matter if you do it in a hut in Africa or if you do it on, on the, the, the strip in Las Vegas. If you come together under what He did and He did alone, let's never lose sight and focus of that. He went to the cross alone. And it was Christ alone that paid for our sins. And it was enough. Christ is enough. Nothing else needs to be added to that. Christ is enough. And, and just in our, as our final um, show that we understand this, and, and, and I just want to make a statement. I want to call a few groups of people forward so we can gather around and, and while we gather around this cross understand it's not about this cross understand that it's not about the, uh, any piece of wood it's about our Savior but, but I want to call together a few people who serve this church and who through their hands and through their volunteer and through their, their, their service they bless all of us I want to call forward the people who are our greeters, who stand at our doors and, and who shake hands and, and give people a hug and, and give them the bulletin and let them know who shine the light of Christ on everybody who walks through that door. If you're a greeter, if you'll please come forward. I want to call forward the people who work in the cafe, who get here early every Sunday, who go out not just Sunday morning, but the, the hours that are spent preparing and gathering the food and the drinks and, and taking it and, and putting it out on plates and so that we can come in here each, each Sunday morning and we can have a, a cup of coffee and, and some fellowship time as we, we have a banana or, or, or a, a donut. And everybody who serves in our cafe, if you could come forward. Teachers, God bless our teachers, the people who, who, who take our children in the back and who teach them the Word of God, who spend this time where they could be sitting in here and they go back there and they devote their time to our children to teach them about the beautiful things that God's, God has done in our lives and continues to do in our lives. If you're a teacher, Ed, please come forward. The band, the band who, who comes up here each week and they spend their time at home and practicing and, and looking up the lyrics and the music and learning new songs and, and raising up their voices to lead us in praise and worship of, of Jesus Christ and, and shining some, some beautiful truth upon what He has done for us and, what he, and who He is. And we have people who, who, after every service, they gather and they put the messages on tapes to the tape ministry. If you're serving in our tape ministry, please come forward. Who, who spend their time, they're sometimes the last ones to leave because they are making sure that anybody who wants to hear the message, who wants to hear a message from the Scripture, is getting that message. Anybody who cleans the church, we have people who come up here not just Sunday morning. If this isn't just a Sunday morning thing for some people, they come up here at their own time during the week and they are the ones who are vacuuming and cleaning the floors and, and, and washing the toilets and... And these are the people who are taking of their, their own time to make sure that when we gather here on Sundays that it's a nice place to gather, a clean place to gather. We have people who are, have deal with our finances and whether it's they're taking your donations, uh, your offerings, and they count it each week and they make sure that, that it, it is all done in a, in a God-honoring way and that our bills are paid and that uh, our... Uh, it, it's all recorded properly, just taking care of all of our money, the people who account our, our, our finances and our offerings. And our security, we have people, I don't even know if we, most of us are aware of that, but we have people who are security in this building, who watch over us, who watch over your kids while they're back there, who, who make sure that the building is safe as we gather here on Sundays. Communion servers, people who pass out the Lord's Supper, once a month, the first Sunday of the month, we have a Lord's Supper. This is, this is just a portion of the people who make this church run. I don't ever, ever want anybody to think that because 
I'm the person who stands up here with a mic that it's me. It's not. It, it is all of these people who gather and more. And I, I, if I'm, I'm not naming every ministry, please don't take offense. This is just a sampling of the people who gather together, not because we add anything to Jesus. We don't add anything to what He's done. But every person up here takes their time and their talents and their energy to shine a light upon what He did on this cross for us. To shine a light upon the grave that He walked out of uh, three days later. I thank you all so much for your efforts and you're gathering together and for saying that I'm not going to run away. I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not going to think that somebody else is going to do it. I'm not going to walk away. I'm going to stand by Christ's side and I'm going to shine that light on Him. God calls us. He calls us to gather. He hung on the cross alone. He was lifted up alone. He was stripped of everything that He had, everybody that He had, and He hung on that cross alone. He hung on that for hours and waited to die in agony. But then He calls us together. Then He calls us together to worship Him. He calls us together to, to glorify Him, to recognize what He's done. I want to close out the service and I want to invite you back next week and I want to again I want to say thank you so much for the people who serve the people who, who, who are serving in our women's ministry our men's ministry our children's uh, all the things there's so many things that, 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 that I didn't mention and I'm going to thank all of you for that for the people who have visited us today thank you for visiting for the people who call New Hope their home I, I just thank you so much I'm going to invite you back next week. We're going to celebrate the same Jesus. And you're going to see all these servants up here. You're going to see them in action. You're going to see how they shine the light upon Jesus through what they do. So we can pray. Our dear Father in Heaven, we thank You so much that You alone went to the cross, that You alone are enough. Lord, that nothing that we can do can add to what you have done for us. Solo Christo, solus Christus, you alone, Lord. We thank you that you gave your son, that, that when you made it very clear there is no alternative, there is no other cup, there is no other way, and that if we want to spend an eternity with you, that, Lord, we come to you on your terms and we give you praise for that, that you opened up that door for us. And Lord, for those of us who haven't opened up that door, you tell us in Revelation that, that, that you stand at that door and you knock and you want us to open that door to you. So Lord, help us to either, if we haven't opened that door, open our hearts to, the, to you. And, and if we have, then to be uh, that voice that calls out to a world that needs it. We thank you, Father. And we pray these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.